Welcome to the studio, it's Froyal here. I'm so glad you've joined me. Today we have mixed media techniques that are gonna be a whole lot of fun, a little messy, very experimental. So come on and join me. Right, so last week I created some absolutely beautiful, fabulous jelly prints using baby powder, glorious colors, inspired by my travels to Venice. And if you haven't seen it, you really need to have a look. <laughs> it was a fabulous episode. I think I created the best prints I've ever jelly printed. <laughs> so I had a few questions. What about cornstarch? Well, what about cornstarch? So this week I have the Edmonds, of course I do, we're in New Zealand, cornflour, and what do you think? I think we should give it a go. So let's play with some different colors entirely. How about some blues and purples? Ooh, maybe a little turquoise. Yes, that's where we're headed. That's what we're gonna create. It can only get messy. <laughs> And disclaimer, I haven't tried this before. I don't know what difference it'll make to the baby powder, but you know, we always have a whole lot of fun. Okay, so I'm starting with some ultramarine blue on the plate. Yes, we're going for some blues and turquoise. You know, I'm thinking that maybe the cornstarch might make it look like a bit of a galaxy with the blues. So I turned my plate landscape and we'll see how this is going to look beautiful colors are down hello cornstarch <laughs> now what should we do should we just like flick it on i'm flicking yeah our flicking's fine it's got such a weird texture cornflower don't you think a bit more yeah okay a bit more a bit more a bit more i think this was should look very stars in the night galaxy like that's what i'm thinking okay Cornflowers on. Let's pull the print, see what we get. Ooh, it's a little bit more lumpy than the baby flower and it doesn't smell as nice. Just so you know. <laughs> I've got no idea what it's gonna work out like, but it can't be too much different. I think that because it didn't go through like, you know, the shaky bottle, perhaps there's bigger lumps to it because I literally threw it on instead of shaking it through a strainer but oh man this is so gonna work look at that don't you think that's hello night sky looking yes so what we're gonna do is put a second coat a second layer on these prints and let's create some real galaxy looking papers i'm thinking that's gonna work now what are we gonna do with that because that's pretty lumpy. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm going to put some, let's put some turquoise on. Let's just not think about it too much because otherwise we might, oopsie, spit much blue, get stressed out. So we're going to put some paint right over the top and let's see what it does. Look, I've completely covered it. I completely covered the cornstarch. Now I'm using the fabulous Japanese rice paper. I love this paper because it's really soft, it's very absorbent, but it's also thick and strong, which, you know, it needs to be when I'm creating. It needs to have a little strength to it, that's for sure, for sure. So what happened when we covered the cornstarch entirely? Look, you can't even see it. Oh man, it dissolves more than the baby powder, I'm thinking. Interesting, we can put another print over that. Let's just pull a ghost print because that's got all the build up there on the plate. And I'm thinking if we're going to get the night sky back, we kind of need to get rid of some of the paint off there. So let's pull the ghost print. That print's going to make a great background. We'll add some more cornstarch to the plate and put over that print. Oh man, look at the ghost print. That looks even better, but look at that. Look at the texture on that. Yes, there's a whole lot of fun. <laughs> now I pulled some more one color background prints. That easy, one color on the plate, pull the print. You don't wanna see it, it's boring. We wanna get, want get to the fun stuff. So I've already got a few of these papers and they are almost dry 
almost dry is like hello almost dry so let's get moving and have a bit more fun and put some other colors on the plate we're going with the blues or oh, what about a bit of Payne's gray and we're going to splash the cornflower on now I could make it a little finer and not so clunky and chunky because yes I did get a little carried away and made it quite chunky last time and it's still stuck to my plate but it's only cornflour it'll wash off right don't panic it'll be okay so I pulled out the sieve from the kitchen <laughs> don't tell mum where it went <laughs> and I'm thinking what about if we put some oh yes look at us we're dusting like we're making cookies <laughs> Christmas cookies yeah that's not gonna happen <laughs> so you know look at that it's snowing oh man it looks like it's snowing so if you want it to be more finer not so clunky not so chunky then get a sieve from the kitchen and put it through that and look how much finer and dust like it creates I like that that's about as Christmassy as it's going to get. <laughs> oh yeah, you can feel it under your hand. It's not so thick. So that's not a bad option using a sieve. Yes, look at our night sky. Don't you think you'd have to be in a dark sky area to see it? But look at it. You know what we could do? If we're going to do galaxies, we should pull out some interference paint and really get into the galaxy zone. All right, we're definitely doing that. So what have I got on there? I've got that much. Hmm. Let's create something with just a little bit of turquoise just for fun. It doesn't all have to be galaxy looking. This one could just be a little fun. We've got all of that already on the plate. That's building up a fabulous layer for to make a wonderful ghost print now what happens if we throw it on again clunky or not oh man it's a little clunky so let's go the sieve i think the sieve's probably better it's just a lot finer it depends on what you want it to look like and how much you want on the plate i mean you can get crazy like this and create really thick areas because it's just masking out your paint wherever you put the cornstarch you're not going to see the paint so you'll see more of the underneath paper which is pretty cool and if you want it to like mask bigger areas you just add more to the plate like that <laughs> you just might need to wash it off later but you know it'll be all right what about if we print it onto black Hard stop. I'm loving that idea. Righto. Let's do it. I've got some black cardstock. Oops. Oops. I put it a little crooked on the plate. But you know, you can't let that worry you. I've got my 9 by 12 plate. I love this plate because it takes the colour right to the edge. It doesn't have that white line around it. I don't have to chop anything off. And I absolutely love that. Yay. So let's have a look at how beautiful that is on the black cardstock. It's only like, it's not a really heavy cardstock. It's really nice. Oh, yes. Look at that. That looks so cool. And then we can put another layer on top of it with some of the other beautiful colors. Loving that. That is just glorious. That worked really well. And look how much is left on there. I think I'm going to pull another print with that. What about that one? That was one I pulled before. That's pretty nice. It was a ghost print. So let's just put another print on top of the ghost print. It's just a matter of trying different ideas, trying different colors, trying different layers. Keep printing the textures and see what you create. If it doesn't work out, try something else. Oh man, that chunky cornstarch is really stuck to my plate. <laughs> But that's looking beautiful. The texture's really glorious. And I think we'll have to just keep experimenting. Now, what do you think the difference is between this cornstarch and the baby powder? I'm thinking the baby powder dissolves a lot easier in the paint, whereas the cornstarch 
sticks to the plate more. That's just what I'm finding right now. I think you can probably create um, different marks with the cornstarch because putting it through the sieve makes it really powdery like really light but then you can also throw it on in bigger clumps if you want to create more areas of condensed masking then you can throw it on but just know it does stick to the plate more so you do have to periodically stop and clean it off <laughs> If you're like me and you have to have things nice and clean and organized, um, it might bug you, just saying. And you can easily blow off both the powder and the cornstarch after you've taken a print. Let's put this one on. The possibilities really are endless. It's a lot of fun. It's very simple. Hello, the equipment doesn't cost a lot. A packet of cornstarch or a bottle of baby powder, either one creates a fabulous mask. I'm just loving it. But I think after the first few prints, I haven't really done too many, but after these first few prints of the cornstarch, I think the baby powder was easier because it seemed to dissolve more into the paint. I know, right? But you probably need to try both. Look at that. That's really cool. What I found last time I played with this technique was that it built up on the plate like so the build up of the powder created the most incredible prints. So I'm thinking that the cornstarch should probably be the same. We just have to be patient, build it up a little bit more, try a few more prints on the plate and see how it looks. So cornstarch down, beautiful colors. Oh, got a basic background. Although I don't think I contrasted the colors enough for my background <laughs> of these. But we can do that with the next print. I'm just wanting to get some texture build up on these prints so we can add some highlights, add some bronze, add some interference paints. On the next layer of the print, I think that'll really make the difference. That's when your eyeballs are going to pop out of your head with how beautiful the prints are going to look. Yeah, they're not really popping at the moment, but bear with me, we'll get there. So interference paint interferes with the light spectrum. These are the golden fluid ones. They're coated mica flakes. I know, doesn't that sound fancy? <laughs> Now you can get the golden in the fluid and the heavy body paint. I find if you're using stencils, then the heavy body paint is better on the gel plate. But if you're just playing around like we're going to be doing, brushing it on or using it for highlights and texture, then the fluid paint probably works better. You can also get other brands of interference paints like I think like hobby crafts kind of brands. Not sure, but they're really fun and they do come in inks as well. So when you put the beautiful interference paint onto white background, it's pretty unimpressive. You really don't see much at all. That's the paint there on white. Yeah, I know, right? It's really not very impressive. But when you put the beautiful paint onto black background, that's when it really comes alive. Or a dark black ground. It doesn't have to be black. But now you'll see, hello baby, look at that. It's like magic. <laughs> it's magic. I'm telling you, look at that. That is amazing. I absolutely love interference paint because there's so many creative ideas you can use them for. Look at that. I know it's magic. And then look at them on the white. You can hardly even see them. They're nothing. They're really beautiful and you can use them in so many different ways. So we're going to have a play with our galaxies with interference paint. I'm using interference blue, which is like beautiful opal essence and interference violet, which is just stunning. And that's all there is to it. What we're going to do is just going to grab one of these prints that's almost dry. And we're going to put some of the beautiful interference paints onto the gel plate. Now, we're just going to have a little play. We're going to have a little experiment and see how it looks. I think I'm just going to brush it on and see how we go with that. You can roll it on, of course, but, you know, having a little play, 
brushing it on want to just create some texture let's put a little bit of scrumpled up cling wrap just to create a texture really to take out the brush lines actually and then what we're going to do is pull that print on this beautiful background that looks like a galaxy so it's the build up on the papers that make really dynamic prints so you've just got to try different ideas see how they look and if you don't like it try something else it really is okay you need to experiment have a play oh man <laughs> See how awesome that looks? Yeah, I know. I got a bit carried away with the interference paint. <laughs> I think perhaps that's a little too much, but we can just put another layer over it. Yes, we will. Note to self, mm, less next time. But don't you think the color is amazing? Yes, it is. You just have to agree that it is. Righto, I'm putting on less and I'm going to roll it <laughs> because that might spread it out a li little bit and make it not so incredibly totally cover the whole thing and what about if we put we're putting this one on because this is a beautiful textured background on the black cardstock what about if we just touch it in some areas and add some highlights let's see what that does yes that looks amazing look at that the interference colors are just amazing they look beautiful righto well we still got quite a bit on the plate so i'm going to add some highlights to this one and see how that looks that should pick up more of the interference color off the plate that's looking beautiful look you can see some of the cornstarch but you know, if I lick it with my finger, <laughs> it's gone. You could actually use probably a damp cloth. Might be a little more healthy for you. Just don't stick your finger in the paint and lick it. It's probably not a good thing to do. <laughs> Righto, I'm using a damp cloth and look, it wipes off really, really easy. Look how nice that texture is. That's got some really nice texture. And the interference colours are just so beautiful. Look at the way it shines. Yeah, I'm loving that. Look at the texture on it. Amazing. Righto. Let's find another one. Just amazing how beautiful these prints are looking. Okay, we'll just put one more of the interference paint. And then I'm pretty sure we need some bronze or copper. Ooh, maybe we'll add some copper highlights. Rondo, so let's add some beautiful interference highlights onto this piece. Oh, just love it. Now as the prints dry, they will become even more beautiful and metallic with those interference colors. See how you can see now how these ones, now that they're more dry, you can see the incredible colors of the interference paints. I know, they're absolutely amazing. You have to try them. Let's have a little play with some copper, or maybe some bronze, or maybe just both. I know, I'm just going straight over the interference color, because I can. <laughs> because why not <laughs> it's all gonna be beautiful oh yes baby adding a little bit of the bronze and the copper oh you can hear the galaxies sing right so we might add some little bit of the cornstarch onto the plate I think I do like the powder better than the cornstarch, just saying. I'm really happy I'm experimenting with the cornstarch, but I don't know, man. I think I just like the way the powder feels. It smells better. It doesn't clump up as much, and I think it doesn't get so clogged on the plate. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I like the powder better. So I think that it has been a great experiment now I'm not pushing down entirely because I just want highlights. I don't want to cover the whole thing. Oh, 
Oh, it looks amazing. <laughs> I am so glad I got to experiment with this. So much fun. Oh, a little bit more, a little bit more. I know. That is just beautiful. It does seem to clump up more on the plate more than the powder does but that's kind of okay if you want to just go around this way keep some clear areas look at that that is so galaxy like <laughs> i just love that now that's got a little of the interference paint a little bronze and a little copper oh man we need to add like a star or something don't you think yes i think so or a planet oh that is just beautiful. Okay, well, I don't really know if there's enough left on the plate. I'll give it a more of a rub this time, but I think that the paint's gonna be too dry on the plate. We might have to add some more, but we'll see if we can pull up any of that from the ghost print. The bronze and the copper look so good with the interference paint. That's another thing I forgot to tell you. You can mix the interference paint with color, with ordinary acrylic paints, and it gives it that beautiful metallic opalescent shine. Yes, have an experiment with that. It looks amazing. Oops, might have left it down too long. Oh no, she's coming up. Oh yes, that looks beautiful. You see how you really do have to take a few layers to create the really good textures and to create that build up of color. Now that looks beautiful. The texture is glorious and the colors are starting to really sing on the prints now because we've got those multiple layers. There's no shortcuts, I'm sorry. You can't do it in one pull. <laughs> you really have to build up the colors on the print from just trying and experimenting and pulling it a few times. That looks really beautiful. Loving that one the best so far. Yay! Now this one is a little damp still, but oh well, it'll pick up something, right? <laughs> something will work on it. Now the build up is looking beautiful. Much happier with these prints because they're just more interesting. So have a play with the interference paints. They look amazing. Mix them with your other acrylic colors. They look even more incredible then. And try the powder or the cornstarch or both because they really do have a different feel about them. I'm leaning towards the baby powder, but the cornstarch is working all right too. Ta-da, look at that. That's just beautiful. Now, if you are bothered by the leftover cornstarch on your page, you can just, you know, hello, touch it with a damp cloth and that does dissolve it. It seems to disappear. If you've got big clumpy areas that you don't like, just touch it with a damp cloth or a baby wipe, that works too. And those clumpy areas disappear like magic. That color's really nice. I'm really liking that mix of the bronze and the copper. You might need to stop and uh, clean your plate at some stage if it just gets too gluggy is the word I think I'm thinking of. <laughs> so, but it's just an amazing way to create texture. It's a lot of fun. And I think you should give it a try. Look at that, through the silver on top of everything else. That print's beautiful. Have a look. That's just glorious. There's so many textures and colors that you can create with such a simple idea. Bit of cornstarch, maybe a sieve if you've got one to make it come through a little bit finer. And have a go with some different colors. Remember, you need to do multiple layers to really create the best prints, but it's really easy. It's very satisfying to see such beautiful results. What are we gonna do with them next? I don't know, man. <laughs> You're gonna have to come back and find out. So what do you think of my prints? Aren't they absolutely beautiful? Here's the glorious night sky. Oh. <laughs> 
they turned out fabulous that's just with the blues and the cornstarch do you like the cornstarch or the baby powder hmm it's a good question this one here has got the interference paint on it isn't it beautiful and you can feel all the glorious textures it could the textures of the paint on the paper pretty much turned out the same as the baby powder you have to do lots of different layers to create that beautiful look and it really is worth the effort this one had the bronze and the copper on it as well as everything else and it looks beautiful which one do I like the best I think I like this one look how glorious that looks the colors are so beautiful and rich and multi-layered you can see the dark background color and then you can see the interference paint and you can see bronze and copper all of it's on there this one's really nice too with the turquoise and just a little hint or a highlight of the copper that looks pretty cool this one's another turquoise one beautiful that one's really textured that must have had a few extra layers <laughs> so you'll have to tell me in the comments do you like the baby powder with the Venice colors or do you like the cornstarch with our galaxy experiments? Thanks for joining me today. Wasn't it just so much fun? I must say, but I do prefer the baby powder over the cornflour. I think you might have noticed that because I did say it a few times. <laughs> I like the feel of it better but the prints do turn out relatively the same you just have to make sure you use multiple layers taking consecutive prints to create that texture anyway it was fabulous I loved it so big announcement we're moving house yes I know don't tell me <laughs> I already know that I moved in February now we're moving again hasn't quite worked out like we hoped but we are going to our favorite city of Napier <sighs> and we will be doing a lot of art deco themed episodes so I won't be here for the next three weeks because I've got to pack all the rest of my studio up put it in a big truck and cart it back down the island I know right it's huge moving it's a big upheaval are you gonna miss me <laughs> I really hope you're gonna miss me now if you do miss me come and join me on patreon I have weekly episodes of my hundred days of collage every Friday the lesson is uploaded on patreon that won't stop that will continue because I've already finished the first and the second class so there's another two months worth of episodes for patreon or you can find my 100 days of collage now on Skillshare if you don't want to join me on Patreon although I don't know why you wouldn't it's a lot of fun and it's a weekly episode accountability is always a really good thing and we have live chats but you can watch it on Skillshare if you want to go on and watch the whole class and create in your own time and space you will find all of the links in the description under the video I hope you have a great creative weekend and think of me as I'm packing boxes. <laughs> See you next time in my brand new studio. 